Those of you that are trying to reduce sugar intake and you want to do that through an understanding of how these neural circuits work and you want to short circuit some of the dopamine release that's caused by ingesting sugary foods, it can be advantageous to ingest sweet foods either alone or in combination with foods that reduce glycemic index or reduce glycemic load. So that might mean making different food choices. So paying attention to sweet tasting foods that can satisfy sugar cravings, but do not have as steep, or I should say, do not cause a steeper rise in blood sugar. Or it could mean consuming other foods along with sweet foods in order to reduce the glycemic index and thereby slow or blunt the release of dopamine. Sugar cravings can be very intense, and we all must have suffered from it once in our lifetime. Sugar is fine for you in small amounts, but too much can lead to weight gain, acne, type 2 diabetes, and increase your risk of several serious medical conditions. Stay till the end to find out how to stop these cravings. Initially, we need to understand why we crave sugar in the first place. If we don't know the reason behind our cravings, we will not be able to stop them. It mostly results from blood glucose imbalance. When you consume sugar, your blood glucose rises. The pancreas responds by producing insulin, which allows glucose to enter the body's cells to provide energy. When the body glucose level is too low, the body craves food that increases glucose levels. Stress triggers the release of cortisol in the body. It causes the release of glucose from the liver and raises our levels. These fluctuations in blood glucose can trigger cravings. They might result from bad habits. Perhaps your family members tend to overeat, so now you do the same. Some people eat when they're stressed, but you need to understand the root cause of your cravings, true hunger, emotional eating, or habit. When you know the reason for your desires, you are on the way to recovery. Glucose is one of the primary energy sources of our body. Consuming sugar triggers the mesolimbic dopamine system, which is the brain's reward system. When the body releases dopamine, it reinforces our desire for sugar. The more sugar we consume, the more our brain requires it to release more dopamine. Now that we know the source of our cravings, it's time to learn how to stop them for good. First, you need to think about dopamine release in the brain. Also, you have to understand how the neurocircuit in the brain works. And in general, we can say that anytime we ingest fiber and or fat, lipids, along with a particular food, it will reduce the glycemic index of that particular food. Either the absolute level of blood glucose that a particular food causes, or the rate at which that elevation in blood glucose occurs. Huberman explains that we can reduce the glycemic index of any food we consume when we include lipids such as fats in it. Eating more fats helps reduce the rise in blood glucose that comes with ingesting sugar. Also, dopamine released by your body gives the satisfaction that comes from consuming sugar. Ultimately, when you blunt dopamine release from sugar, you will reduce the craving for it in the long term. If the availability of cocaine becomes unlimited, the addicts will crave it even more. The scenario is similar to what happens with people suffering from sugar cravings. They consume more because of the dopamine release caused by it. Therefore, you should slowly control your sugar cravings when you curtail the dopamine release. Over time, your dopamine levels will drop along with the satisfaction you gain from giving in to sugar cravings. It is best to replace your craving for sweet food with foods having a low glycemic index. However, if you can't stop eating sweet foods, start eating some healthier food with it. For example, you can have some broccoli with your bowl of ice cream. Those of you that are trying to reduce sugar intake and you want to do that through an understanding of how these neural circuits work and you want to short circuit some of the dopamine release that's caused by ingesting sugary foods, it can be advantageous to ingest sweet foods either alone or in combination with foods that reduce glycemic index or reduce glycemic load. According to Huberman, to reduce the glycemic load of the food, you should ingest fibers and fats. He also explained the effect of highly processed food on sugar cravings. So what we're really talking about here is trying to reduce the dopamine signal that is the consequence of ingesting sweet foods. And we're talking about doing that through these different parallel pathways, not just by preventing sweet taste, but also by preventing the post-ingestive effects of sweet foods. And of course, the backdrop to all of this is that most of us, again, most of us, not all of us, should probably be ingesting fewer refined sugars. Certainly there are exceptions to that, but I think the bulk of data point to the fact that 
ingesting these highly palatable, certainly highly palatable, highly processed foods or foods that contain a lot of high fructose corn syrup can be really deleterious to our health, especially in kids. According to Huberman, we must blunt our dopamine increase by avoiding foods with a lot of fructose or refined carbohydrates. Finally, we must know that eating food that elevates blood glucose levels causes us to crave sugar and eat more. In order to get rid of it for good, you need to stop eating food that disturbs your blood glucose level. Do you suffer from sugar cravings? Let us know in the comment section. If you found this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and press the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future uploads. Until then, take care.